Hey, what's up folks? At work, I am Image Boy. If there's a project that comes along with pictures, whether they're georectified or not, it tends to come in my direction, which is weird because I'm not really a raster GIS person. I found those people have this kind of serene, patient quality about them. I do not have that quality. But it is what it is, and a new project came along, and that project was to put our historic tax maps online. Because paralegals and others request these on occasion, and we'd rather them be able to get those things themselves and not have to work our staff to do that. So I said, fine, why don't you put the imagery on this hard drive here and give it to me, and I'll see what I can do. And they did. And there were 51,000 images. 51,000. Ah, and they were, of course, all scanned as TIFFs, and web browsers don't natively understand TIFFs. So this left me with a bit of a problem, and this is how I solved it. So I've got this giant folder with TIFFs in it, and the 51,000 TIFFs. And I had to convert those to a format that web browsers would understand. I tried some different experiments with different formats, different quality settings. WebP seemed to work out the best. Uh, AVIF actually worked out a little better, but for some reason Microsoft strips AVIF support out of Edge, even though it's built into Chrome. I don't know why. It could be like a, maybe a licensing issue or something. I don't know. But Avis was out, so I went with WebP. I use Image Magic to do that converting. I don't know if that's still the cool thing to use. It's been around forever. I remember using Image Magic on Sun workstations back in the day. But it's still kept up to date. It supports all the latest formats, and it's still awesome. So I used that and a command called Mogrify to go through all the tests and convert them into WebP. And that ran for like a day or so, and, and it was done. Now from there, uh, I've got 51,000 images, but you don't want to do your sorting when people want to filter out what they want on just a file system, just looking at names. Because I've done that before with other smaller projects, but 51,000 is, is a lot. Not efficient way to do it. So I, I created a table in Postgres to be like an index for this that I can do my queries on. and. Our tax maps are this kind of book page block a lot sort of things. Our historic tax maps are done by book and page or essentially a book and an index for the pages for that book. So those are all written into the file name. So it's there's the year, the first three characters are the book and the second two are the page. So I just have a little routine and node that just gets a list of the files splits out the file name into its parts and throws it into Postgres. Now I've got a Postgres table with 51,000 records. Sweet. Now I just need a build, to build a viewer for this. Now, when I was thinking about this, I made a layout and it's your basic flex box, 100% view height sort of layout where I have a gallery on the left and this is where you can filter and pick from the different choices and the viewer over here and taking up the bulk of the page. So I started thinking about what kind of things I would need to share between components. And there's only going to be two components, this gallery and the viewer. And basically the viewer needs to know what the image is and the gallery needs to know what the current selected book is because that's how I'm going to organize thing. And the records for that match that book and the image for each one so it can draw those. And that's and, and also so it can set the active image for what the, the viewer is going to look at. So that's my basic thinking for it. And I figured I would use uh, the thing, stuff I usually use, uh, Svelte, Svelte and Tailwind, to build this. For the viewer, the older sites I had done like this, viewing old aerial imagery, I they're so old, I, I looked and they're because I thought I'd use that same viewer library. It, it's pretty nice, but it's actually a jQuery library, and that old, those little apps are running jQuery 1. Point something, and no. So I was going to build this fresh, and I looked at different things, and I thought, I wonder if Inkscape, not Inkscape, I wonder if uh, Leaflet, 
can just be an image viewer? And the answer, of course, is yes, because Leaflet's awesome and it can do anything. And big thank you to this person, Long Hot Summer, which sounds uh, like not a GitHub handle, sounds like a handle for another kind of all black background website. But hey, uh, it's still, this person still did me a big favor by sharing this gist. Um, it's fairly straightforward to do this with Leaflet. You basically set a simple CRS for the canvas, so it's not doing any kind of map projection -y sort of stuff. You need the image width and height, so you can set that as new bounds for your map. And then you just add the image to the map. And that's it. You've got an image viewer using Leaflet. Cool. So let's do that. Now here's what I built. Uh, I thought kind of old faded yellow and dark gray and maybe some background of an actual old tax map would give it some flavor, maybe some kind of graph paper looking stuff for the leaflet background. So that's that's what I made. Uh, I, I think it looks old, so whatever. This is an old index tax map. Over here on the left we have our gallery and we're looking at book one. What it does is, thanks there, our text maps are, are organized by book and then each book has pages. So book is what we fetch from the database, from that, that index table. When we filter for page or year, it's doing that on the client side. That way there's only one request back to the database and everything else is done on the client side. So if I just want, say, page one, I can filter that here. If I just want page one from 1971, I can filter that here. If I flip to another book, since that's the organizing thing, it will clear out my filters because I may have picked something on my filters that don't exist for that other book. So that's how things are organized. And the viewer is just leaflet. It's a responsive design. So this is a flex box, this area here that has two flex box areas, this gallery area and the viewer area set to flex row. If I shrink it, it sets to flex column. And instead of that kind of gallery preview, we just have this drop down list because now you're on a phone and space is precious. And that's how that works. Now, there's very, very little code involved here. Very, very little code. The uh, viewer here itself, uh, you're basically looking at setting up the map, attribution control, and this is that little bit of code we were looking at from the other thing, from the, uh, the gist to make that image overlay. Now, one thing you can do, the, these images are different sizes. Um, so, and, and you need that to set the uh, bounds of your, of your image for leaflet. What you can do there is you can make a new image, and this is a image object that is not added to the DOM. And then I'm setting image source and I'm giving it where that image is. And then this is an async function. I'm doing await image decode. When this decode image fires, that means the image is loaded in the JavaScript end of the browser. So it knows what that image is now. Now I can get the image width and height and set that for the, the layer for leaflet. And that's how that works. So you can see it's, it's a very small bit of code. That is the entire viewer code, which is, hardly anything. The gallery, now bear in mind like book one has I think over a thousand records and you're seeing these image previews and I know you're probably thinking you bandwidth hogging bastard how dare you load a thousand images <laughs> into this gallery. Well here's what we're doing there. We're using, let me see if I find that. Uh, that is the viewer, we want the gallery. And here's the image. We're saying loading equals lazy. When you set an image value to, to have a, a uh, property, loading equals lazy, 
What that tells the browser is do not fetch that image until that image was within the viewport of the browser. So although we have a really long bunch of images here, let's go to our network tab, it isn't loading them all. As I scroll down, see all these network requests for these more images? It's only getting them when they come into the viewport. So you can have this long list of images, and I've sized these divs roughly right. So when the images come in, they only come in when the browser actually gets there, when they're in the viewport. And that way you're not sucking down all that bandwidth. So that's that's how you can do that with a gallery and not and have a really long gallery here and not have it uh, just basically eat all your bandwidth or eat your user's bandwidth, so to speak. So that's how that works. Gosh, is there anything else interesting here? I don't think so. This is basically all it does. And this is the gallery, which is the only other component besides the viewer. And it's got some, some code here for the uh, options for the filters. But the JavaScript itself, again, you're looking about like 30 lines of JavaScript. And that powers the whole viewer for the, uh, or the whole gallery. I'm calling this the gallery over here. And this is the viewer component, and that's the gallery component. And the viewer itself is like 50 lines of JavaScript, and that powers the whole thing. The only other JavaScript running is in the, I have a store to share some values. And there's a little bit there, it's about 50 lines there, and it's doing fetch to uh, get the records. Basically doing two fetch fetches. One to get a unique uh, list of books, because that's, that's the primary organizing factor, that's what goes here. The other one gets the records, all the records in the table where that book value is what the value is. Those are my two fetches and that's it. So it's a very tiny amount of code and it's an image viewer for 51,000 historic tax maps that you can uh, filter based on book and page and year. And it's also doing a little bit of hash work up here. This, this, this bit of code, half the code in the store here is, is for the hash. It basically writes whatever you're looking at into your URL. So you can send somebody a link. And it'll go straight there, or people can use their back and forward buttons to navigate which images they're looking at. That's it. That's how the whole thing works. Anyway, not a very exciting project, and it's not anywhere online where you can play with it yet. The person this is for is uh, out of the office right now, so I have to catch back up with them. Um, but the code is on online. It's very particular to Mecklenburg County's stuff. It's uh, how we organize our tax maps is specific to these, how we organize our tax maps. But if you're looking to make this kind of image viewer project, you've got a bunch of images and you need to do something like this, it's not a bad place to get started. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting and everybody's doing well and you're happy and I will catch you later. Bye.